Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2008 Mercedes Sprinter with a 3.0 liter. The complaint on this vehicle is the battery light remains on on the dash while the engine is running. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside the vehicle and confirm the complaint. After confirming the complaint, we're going to connect a scan tool to the vehicle to see if we have any trouble codes in the engine control unit. I want to point out that the driver told me when the battery light first came on on the dash, he was driving and then eventually the vehicle shut down on its own. When the vehicle shut down, it couldn't start it back up. He went to a local parts store and bought a new battery. He installed a new battery. After installing the battery, the vehicle was able to start again. After it started, he drove straight to the shop and here we are. So, it sounds like this vehicle has a problem with the charging system. And it's good to know that the battery had been replaced. So now, let's go inside the vehicle and confirm the complaint. After confirming the complaint, then we're going to talk about what we're going to do so we can fix whatever that's causing the battery light to remain on on the dash. Now I'm going to start the engine so we can confirm the customer's complaint. So let's see what happens. So right there, as you can see, the engine is running. The check engine light remained on. Okay, and I was told that there is a light that comes on on this display that shows a battery symbol. Okay, so the battery light remains on. So right there, it says battery slash alternator visit workshop. So that light there is what the customer is complaining about. And he didn't mention the check engine light, but he said that the battery light was on while he was driving. Okay, so customer's complaint confirmed. So now I'm gonna turn off the engine. I'm gonna turn the key back on. I'm gonna get the scan tool connected. After I get the scan tool connected to the vehicle, I will bring you guys back up so we can scan the engine control unit. All right, I got the scan tool connected to the vehicle. So let's see what we got. So let's scan this vehicle. So here in the engine computer, we have three trouble codes. The first one is 2248, alternator electrical error. Okay, so this is what's causing the battery light to remain on on the dash, okay? And then the other trouble code is 2623, charge air system offset drift at idle. And then the third one is 2626 diesel particulate filter. Okay, so we are here to fix what's causing the battery light to remain on on the dash. And the code that's causing the battery light to remain on on the dash is this first code over here. So this is what we're going to address in this video. I'm going to print out all these trouble codes. I will let the customer know about these other trouble codes. And if he wants us to fix these other trouble codes, I can take care of that later, maybe in a different video. But right now, we're going to focus on this trouble code because he wants us to fix the charging system because the battery is being dying pretty much every day. So let's scroll down and see what are the trouble codes we have in the other modules. So in the transmission control unit, we have two trouble codes. The first one is P2783, torque converter temperature too high. And then the second one is P0562, battery voltage low. Okay, so there is something going on with the charging system. And this is usually, this code is usually caused by a defective battery or a bad alternator or a problem in the alternator wiring. So this should be pretty easy and straightforward so we got three codes in the electronic stability program so this is the ABS system okay so pretty much all these modules have trouble codes in them and on the generic side of the tool we have two trouble codes 
okay so that's good to know we're gonna print this out but for now we're gonna go into the engine computer okay since the battery light is remaining on when the engine is running our problem is probably a defective alternator so we're gonna focus on the charging system so let's check out these codes once again okay so we're gonna attack this code so let's go to data so let's look at let's do all value right now I want to look at the charging system data PID okay I just want to look at the voltage so let's deselect let's customize this list so let's deselect all these data PIDs I want system voltage I want the PID for the system voltage so for some reason I cannot see the battery voltage data PID so let's back out let's see if we can find it in the other data group so let's go to sensor overview so okay right here battery voltage so that's the only data PID that I want to see okay so we're gonna list this actually I'm gonna graph it so right now with the key on engine off we have 12.3 volts okay so I'm gonna start the engine with the engine running a good charging system should put out 14 or 14.5 volts so I'm gonna start the engine now let's see what happens so this drop over here is normal but guess what with the engine running we are reading 11 volts so it's going between 12 and 11 volts okay so this is a problem guys we have a problem with the charging system on this vehicle okay now we need to figure out why this charging system is not working is it the alternator is it the battery is it the wiring so now what we need to do is I'm gonna turn off the engine let's turn the key back on now I'm gonna back out okay so the charging system on this vehicle is pretty straightforward and pretty simple but let's look at the wiring diagram to see how the alternator is wired on this vehicle and then I'll tell you what kind of test we're gonna do so we can figure out where the problem is in the charging system so here is the charging system circuit so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our component which is the alternator okay so here is the alternator so the alternator on this vehicle has two wires this red wire is the B positive terminal at the alternator so this is the wire that supplies power to the alternator okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the vehicle because to access this alternator we have to go under the vehicle so we're gonna have to get to the alternator and check for power at this red wire and then there's this dark blue wire and the red tracer so since our engine is a 3.0 liter, so we're gonna follow this wire on this side of the circuit. So let's see where it goes. So over here, this wire splices, it goes to the engine computer, and as you can see, it says lean bus. So the engine computer controls the alternator through this lean bus wire. So the engine computer sends a communication message okay through this lean bus network to tell the alternator to charge the battery I didn't look up how this system works just by looking at the wiring diagram I have an idea of how this system works okay so basically this fuse over here you see it says generator fuse so there's a 300 amp fuse that sends power to the B positive terminal 
of the alternator to power the alternator all the time okay so the alternator receives power over here and then the alternator is grounded by the engine block so since it's mounted on the engine block there's always ground at the alternator and then the computer uses this wire okay to talk to the alternator okay and if we follow this wire all the way up you will see that it also goes to the glow plug control unit okay so basically the computer okay talks to the glow plug control unit and the alternator okay through this wire all right now your question might be so what can cause the battery light to remain on while the engine is running there are a couple of things that can cause that light to remain on the first thing can be a defective alternator if the alternator itself is bad it won't be able to charge the battery that light will be on or we can have an open wire over here okay this red wire could have an open and not supply power to the alternator that will cause the charging system to not work or we can have high resistance at this B positive terminal of the alternator the other thing that can also cause the battery light to be on on the dash is an open in this dark blue wire with the red tracer okay this lean bus wire if there's an open here we will also have the light now we can also have high resistance on the ground side of the alternator which can also cause that light to be on because if you have high resistance on the ground side of the alternator it's going to alter the performance of the charging system okay and the same is true for the positive side of the alternator as well i mean the power supply wire over here on the alternator so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the alternator and do a voltage drop test on the ground side of the alternator and then we're going to do the same test on the positive side of the alternator so now let's go under the vehicle let's get to this alternator and do our test if we don't have any voltage drops at the alternator on both sides the ground side and the power side and if we have our message on this wire then the problem would be a defective alternator so this should be a quick and easy one so now let's go under the vehicle and test that all right guys since we're going to be doing uh, voltage drop testing before we go under the vehicle i want to connect some jumper cables over here on the battery okay because i want to get good power and good ground from the battery okay so actually let me remove this first okay so let's remove this battery cover so we're gonna get power and ground from the battery to make sure that we have good power and good ground when we do our testing. So I'm gonna use these jumper cables. So I'm gonna connect this to power. And then this is gonna be connected to ground. Okay, so we know on our jumper cables we have good ground and good power, okay? Because they're both coming from the battery. So now let's go under the vehicle and do our test at the alternator. The alternator is right above this secondary AC compressor. So here is the alternator. Okay, so this is that communication wire, that lean bus wire that comes from the computer. And this over here is the B positive terminal of the alternator, okay? So it has a little cap up there that I have to undo. So this cap over here, as you can see, we can now see the stud up there 
Okay, so that's the B positive terminal of the alternator. Okay, now since I have the key on inside the vehicle right now, I want to check this lean bus wire first. Okay, this communication wire that the computer uses to talk to the alternator. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this electrical connector. I'm gonna back probe this lean bus wire to see if we have our communication here. With the key on, we should have some communication or some type of voltage on this wire. And any voltage on this wire will be coming from the computer. If we have a voltage here, that will tell me that this wiring is good. So this wire from the alternator all the way up to the computer is good. So now I'm gonna get our lab scope. I'm gonna get this wire back probed and then I'll bring you guys back up. So I got this lean bus wire back probed. Okay. And the pins on the connector don't look spread out. Okay, so the pins on the connector look good. So we don't have any loose terminals on the connector. So we're good to go. Okay. I have my scope ground over here. So now let's look at the lab scope and see what we're gonna find. So we're gonna go to scope multimeter. The key is on in the vehicle. So let's see. If that wire is good, we should have some type of activity there. So right here guys, as you can see, we do have, we do have a message on that wire okay and this is the lean buzz message coming from the engine computer okay so the alternator is definitely receiving the command or the message coming from the engine computer to charge the system okay so after seeing this this is starting to look like we have a defective alternator. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reconnect the electrical connector to the alternator to see if this voltage here will change. Okay, let's see if this message will be different. So let's go back to the vehicle. Okay, with this thing back probed, let's reconnect it and see what happens okay so I reconnected the lean bus wire to the alternator all right so back here our message still looks the same okay so our data pockets are there so our lean bus wire is good okay we don't have an open between the engine computer and the alternator so this is good so now the next test we're gonna do will be voltage drop so now I'm gonna back out so to do the voltage drop test I like to be on the digital multimeter so we're gonna go to digital multimeter okay this is what we have on the network this is the average voltage on the network so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here okay so we are done testing this wire over here so I'm gonna remove our back probing tool okay since we're gonna do the negative side voltage drop first so I want to be on the alternator bolt so I'm gonna connect my ground alligator clamp over here on the alternator bolt I hope you can see that okay so right there now the other test lead is gonna go to battery ground now I want to show you the jumper cables that we got connected to the battery so we have this one over here I'm actually gonna put it right here okay and this one here is power coming from the battery so I'm gonna put it right there so now what we need to do is we're gonna use 
this side okay of our test lead so we got this connected if I touch positive remember this is coming from battery positive right now we have minus 0 0.02 volts because this is not connected if our connection is good if I touch this to positive we should read system voltage or battery voltage there you see that we got 12.05 volts so that's good okay so now I'm gonna take this to this clamp over here which is coming from the battery okay so I hope you guys are following along so we're basically connecting one side of the test lead of the multimeter to the alternator case okay to the alternator bolt and then the other lead to battery ground okay so right now on the lab scope we are reading 0 0.04 which is a good reading but you can do a voltage drop test with no current flow okay so now what we need to do is we have to start the engine and look at the readings with the engine running so now let's go inside the vehicle and start the engine all right so we're gonna climb up here so we can get up in the vehicle and start the engine so now I'm gonna start the engine so as you can hear the engine is running so let's look at our lab scope screen okay so we have minus 0 0.06 volts which is good we have this minus sign because our test leads are just flipped backwards okay so this is good guys this tells me that we don't have excessive resistance on the ground side of the alternator okay there are no voltage drops on the ground side of the alternator okay so we're good to go so now the next test is going to be doing the same test on the positive side of the alternator so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna move actually let me go turn off the vehicle first let's turn off the engine Alright, so the engine is off, we still have our jumper cables connected to the battery. Okay, let's do our last test before we make a definitive call. Alright, so we checked the ground side of the alternator, we're good there. So now I'm going to move this same test lead okay this alligator clamp to the B positive terminal of the alternator up there I don't know if you guys will be able to see because it's so tight up there but I'm gonna get it connected and then I'll bring you guys back up all right guys so I got this alligator clamp connected to the B positive terminal of the alternator so we're good there so we still have our other test lead connected to ground if we have power up there at the alternator and the other test lead connected to ground we should have battery voltage on the scope so right there we have minus 12.24 volts again the minus sign is because our test leads are backwards so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move this alligator clamp okay from ground we're gonna get it out of ground and we're gonna take it to battery positive okay because this is coming from the battery inside the vehicle so right now with the engine off we are reading minus 0.02 volts once again you cannot do this test with the engine off you have to 
start the engine and ideally turn some lights on load the charging circuit to see if we have any voltage drops so now let's go inside the vehicle and start the engine so the engine is running we're gonna turn on the headlights so let's go back to the scope and see what kind of readings we're gonna have there so right now with the engine running so right now we're doing our voltage drop test on the positive side of the alternator okay B positive terminal of the alternator to positive terminal of the battery and as you can see we are reading 0 0.05 volts so this is good guys okay we don't have voltage drops on the negative side we also don't have voltage drops on the positive side so the problem is a defective alternator no questions about it okay let's look at the wiring diagram once again so let me turn off the engine in case you still have questions let me turn off the engine let's sum up what we just did and then I'll tell you what I'm gonna do next to get this fixed if you still have questions about what I did what I did was we did a voltage drop test on the ground side of the alternator so one test lead of the multimeter to the alternator bolt and the other test lead of the multimeter to the battery ground with the engine running we had I believe it was 0 0.02 volt okay which told me that there's no voltage drops on the ground side of the alternator okay and then the other test we did was we did the same test on the positive side of the alternator okay so we connected our test lead one lead of the mirror to this B positive terminal of the alternator and the other lead the other lead of the mirror to this clamp over here to this jumper cable clamp that's coming from the battery inside the vehicle with the engine running we had 0 0.05 volts so which told me that there's no voltage drops on the positive side the first test we did we back probed this wire over here this lean bus wire that comes from the computer and on the scope when we scoped this we saw voltage okay we saw an on and off voltage on the lab scope screen which told me that this wire over here is good the message coming from the engine computer is making it to the alternator since our charging system is not working after checking the wiring I feel comfortable saying that the problem here is the alternator the alternator is defective we have to replace the alternator to fix the charging system on this vehicle okay so bad alternator I'm gonna show you what I have to do so I can get this alternator replaced. I'm not gonna show you the procedure of replacing the alternator. I will get the alternator replaced and then I'll bring you guys back up so I can show you how the voltage will be higher with the engine running with the new alternator installed. Now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna have to do under the vehicle so I can get this alternator removed. Like I said earlier, the alternator lives above this AC compressor so I'm gonna have to remove this AC compressor so I can get full access to the alternator I have to recover the refrigerant from this secondary AC system first and then remove the AC compressor I'm gonna get the compressor out of the way then I'm gonna remove the serpentine belt the main belt okay that's up there you probably won't be able to see it we're gonna remove these two belts after I remove the belt, I am going to disconnect the battery and then I'm going to disconnect the B positive terminal cable at the alternator. We're going to disconnect that lean bus wire at the alternator also. And after we get those wires disconnected, we're going to remove four bolts that hold the alternator against the block. Okay? After removing those bolts, the alternator will come out. I'm gonna install the new one basically 
After doing that, installing the new alternator will be the reverse process of the removal process, okay? Then I'm gonna put everything back together. I'm gonna put the serpentine belt back on, and then the compressor, and then this belt. And after I get everything back together, I will bring you guys back up so we can test our charging system, okay? So, let me remove this alligator clamp over here. So, I'm gonna get the alternator ordered first. Once I get the alternator here, I'm gonna start tearing this thing apart. So I'm gonna get the alternator. So I will do this off camera. I'm gonna get this alternator replaced, and then I'll bring you guys back up once I get the alternator replaced. I did receive a new alternator. I'm gonna show it to you before I install it. So here's the part number of the new alternator. Okay, this is a 200 and 20 amp alternator so these sprinters have two types of alternators I mean in terms of amperage there's one for 180 and another one for 220 okay so this vehicle takes the one with 220 okay so here is the new alternator okay as you can see it has four holes for the mounting bolt. So it's really straightforward, really easy to replace. I'm gonna do that off camera. Once I get this installed, I'll bring you guys back up so we can verify our repair. All right guys, I have installed the new alternator. As you can see, it's up there. Okay, so there is our new alternator. It looks nice and shiny okay so we're good to go so the belts have been installed so now we're good i'm going to show you the old alternator and then we're going to lower the vehicle so we can start the engine and verify our repair so here is our old alternator this is the one i took out of the vehicle okay so this is the bad alternator so now let's lower the vehicle so we can verify our repair all right guys, we are back in the vehicle, but this time with a new alternator installed. So now I'm gonna start the engine and let's see if the battery light will remain on on the dash while the engine is running. So as you can hear, the engine is running. The check engine light is still on. But remember we had a uh, two trouble codes besides the alternator code I mean besides the charging system code so the engine is running no battery lights on okay so this is a good sign so now I'm gonna turn off the engine I'm gonna turn the key on I'm gonna bring up our scan tool here the scan tool is still connected to the vehicle so let's scan this we have a couple trouble codes over here these codes were set because we were doing our tests, okay, to make sure that the alternator circuit was good. I mean, the charging system was good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase these codes. I mean, I have all these codes saved on the scan tool already. So let's erase the codes. So the codes are erased. Now let's see what we got. Okay, so the alternator code is no longer there, but we still have this charge air system offset drift at idle trouble code and this 2626 trouble code. Okay, it says diesel particulate filter. Let's back out. Let's go to the data. Okay, we're going to look at our system, system voltage data PID or battery voltage data PID. So this one over here. So let's customize this list. We're gonna deselect all the PIDs. I'm just gonna look at the battery voltage data PID. Now, remember before, with the engine running, let's graph this. Remember before, with the engine running, before we replaced the alternator, our voltage was around 12 volts with the engine running. It was around 12 volts and 11 volts. Okay, we did the test, we determined that the charging circuit was good, the problem was a defective alternator. Now we have replaced the alternator, 
if the problem was the alternator and if this alternator is good now when we start the engine this voltage should increase it should go up to 14 volts or 13.5 volts so now I'm gonna start the engine so right there As you can see, our voltage is 13.9 volt, which is good, okay? So I'm going to turn on the headlights. Headlights are on, I hope you can see out there. Okay, so headlights are on. Okay, we still have 13.9 volts. I'm gonna turn on the AC. So we are turning all these accessories on just to load the charging circuit. Okay, or the charging system. Okay, so AC is on. Let's see what we got. So we dropped just a little bit. Okay, we have 13.7 volts, which is good, okay? On the good charging system, the voltage should be between 13.5 and 14.5 volts, okay? So as you can see, we are over 13.5 volt so this is good okay so this is fixed guys the charging system on this sprinter van is fixed so I can turn this off okay so this is fixed this vehicle needed an alternator okay so I'm gonna turn off the engine okay so we're gonna back out okay so as you can see right now we still have these two trouble codes i will let the customer know about these two trouble codes he didn't ask us to take care of these codes i'm gonna let him know if he wants us to fix this i will go ahead and fix this okay he brought the vehicle for the battery light and as you guys can see the battery light is no longer remaining on on the dash so we are good to go okay the check engine light may come back on because of that DPF trouble code and that charge air system offset drift at idle trouble code okay so this is fixed guys I'm gonna leave it right over here I'm gonna turn off the engine so we can wrap up this video all right guys so I'm gonna leave it right over here I hope you like the video if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you don't like the video give it a thumb down but if you do, you gotta tell me why so we can make better videos in the future. If this is your first time here, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you next time.